Now today's video for you is part three of how to paint an Asian otter in watercolor. Now in this part, we'll finish all the fur on the head, work on the mouth, and also lay down that very first wash for the fur for the rest of the body. Now this is one of my older lessons from my Patreon channel. So give it a go, and let me show you how to paint realistic animals in watercolor. So let's get the bushes wet, shall we? And let's make a start. This is greyer down the back here than it is compared to the ochre colour within the middle. So we'll use our little kind of split brush, our little um, kind of homemade rake brush. And we'll start putting some details in here. Okay, if you can, try and make sure you bring it out. Don't start from the outside in because you end up with a, with a dot. I'll give you an example of that. Bit of scrap paper. When you start from that point and you pull out, should we have some more paint on the brush first of all? When you start from that point <laughs> and you pull out, what happens is you end up with a spot. Okay, I'm going to over exaggerate it a little bit as a start point. So if I started off there, it's not a tapered edge. So you want to kind of pull away from that. So again, pull away with your brush as you come off the paper. So pull away and then you end up with a nice tapered edge. So for something like this, I'll start from the inside and then out. Okay. And it's worth kind of rotating your board a little bit to make it easier on your hand. Because I'm left-handed, so I would have to move myself around the painting, come around this side and pull out that way. So um, normally I'd probably move the board around, but it's not that easy when I'm trying to video at the same time. So, But that's what you want to do. So bear that in mind. It's worth noting that. So when you put these marks on, you've got to put them on, pull it away, so you're lifting off the paper as you come away. Okay, into the background. I don't want to do it that way so I end up with a spot first and in. I want, I want the spot to be on the inside because that will get covered up anyway with the darker colours. Okay, so all the way down, I'm looking at the shape. You remember we put these reference marks on some time ago? So we know what direction these hairs go in, so we can see the hairs go that way, or the fur. Okay, whichever way you want to look at it. So they all go that way. and. We've got some marks down here. They stay put, even when we put these washes on, as I said they should do. They'll still be visible underneath the paint. So you've got those reference marks you've already put in, so you know roughly what direction the fur goes. It makes a big difference when you're trying to paint this. So again, I'm going to work my way down. Okay, I can see it kind of curls that way. So again, because I'm left-handed, I want to be able to. You want to be use your normal curve of your hand. So again, if you've got your piece of paper, another little demonstration coming on. Here we go. Ready? Okay. Because my hand curls curves that way, I want to do my curls this way because that's a natural curve with my wrist. Okay. If I'm trying to curl it that way, that's not the natural because I'm having to move my arm to get that curl. This way, I'm just using my wrist and my hand. So if you're right-handed, that way around would be easier for you compared to this way. All right. So that's why sometimes it's worth kind of rotating the paper before you get stuck into the, um, the details. Right, okay. Right, so I'll let that dry. In fact, no, I'll tell you what we're going to do actually with that one before we let it dry. I'm going to wash it down. Did you know that was coming then? I bet you did, didn't you? So I'm going to have some clean water, my size 5 brush, ta -da, and we're going to just dampen this down. All these are kind of hard edges you can see underneath there will slowly disappear as we put the, um, the higher layers of detail on. Remember, this is just the beginning of the layers that we're working on at the moment. I'm not scrubbing this. I'm just very lightly touching the paper just to soften that detail down just a wee bit. No, I'm not Scottish. Okay, right. Leave it. Leave it alone. Oh, okay, well, we'll leave that be, let it dry, and then you know what we're going to do next? Back to the top of the head. We'll get some detail on there. Right, it's time for a new brush. Honestly, I'm breaking into a new brush. Don't tell anybody it's a secret. So this is my usual kind of double zero Winsor Newton Cotman. Okay, so we're going to go into that darker colour. So remember the set on the palette? Just bring that into shot for you. We had the wishy-washy version, we got the darker version there. Okay, let's go. We're going to start around here with some lovely points on that brush, I must say. It really is. Lovely, lovely point. So again, I'm looking at the direction of this as well. 
The thing with this detail that we're putting on now, this is obviously the top layer of detail, which will soften down. If we have to put more on later on, we can do. We'll just see how it looks when we first put it on and uh, go from there. Again, I'm looking at the direction that the, uh, the strokes go in on here. Just keeping a really good eye on it as we go along. These are not long lines, they're quite quite short really, I don't want them too short, but you know that you can see the length of the lines I'm doing, which is probably something like this here. So I'm working on. I don't know if you can see this clearly. I'll try and zoom out a little bit more for you. Hopefully it's still in focus. Right, okay. So again, just small lines. That's all I'm working on. Little bits of paint on on the brush in one go. I don't want it completely loaded with paint, so it's going to be quite blobby and thick. So keep checking the direction as you're going along. And we can fine tune this, we can add to it. As I mentioned earlier on, is that we need to think about adding a little bit more colour here and there within this. So when we get to the top of the head around here, we'll add a little bit of blue into the mix. So it's worth kind of grabbing some of this colour out of one section of your mixing palette. Drop it into another section and just add a little bit of blue in there as well. Now and then. So now you can see the starting to come to life that little bit more. Cross the lines over in places. Don't have them all exactly uniform, not all exactly in the same line. This is starting to work and you can see the way, or the reason why, we put that little layer of detail on underneath to begin with because you've got more detail underneath this detail, if you know what I mean, so it kind of, nice kind of layering of, of details. <laughs> it's the way of looking at it. So again, just keep going back in. I tend to wipe the brush off on my palette once. So what I'll do, bring it into shot for you, get some paint on the brush and then I'll just wipe it off just both sides, well twice really, just wipe it off like that. And that's usually enough, or you can dab it on a piece of kitchen roll just once. Just take off a little bit of surplus paint. It means you get fewer strokes, I would say, when you're doing this, but it gives you a bit more control over where it goes as well, so it's, uh, I'd rather do that way. Let's say if you use the, um, the other brush that we did the background with, the, the kind of home manufactured brush, It'd be too uniform, but too, the, the lines would be too side by side, if you know what I mean. So you need to do all the lines individually on this one now. What I'm trying to do now, I'm trying to layer, put some lines crisscross. So again, let's get the test paper, I'll just show you that on here. So I'm looking at getting the lines, instead of being side by side, although we do it on purpose here, by the way. Instead of being side by side like that, what I want to do is just crisscrossing slightly, not like a big cross, but just slightly as you go around, or you go around the colour curves around. Otherwise again, there'll be too much in line, okay? So just make sure that you do that. Just come back down here a little bit more. Add a few darker marks here and there. So they're not all the same thin or thickness. You want slightly thicker ones in places and then thinner ones because that will kind of replicate the wetness as well, the way that the fur is stuck together. This is a bit wet. Just got out of the water after having a swim, doing a backstroke. I think what I might do actually with this one, I'm going to go bring my palette over to show you a minute, very carefully, I don't want to drip it anywhere. Got a little bit of blue in there as you can see. I'm going to add that to this watered down version. Just so I've got a bit of blue in there. And we'll do the same again with, just get some more of this here, pop that into there. A little bit of water, careful not to drop it on the painting. And pick up some of this alizarin crimson and pop that into there as well. So we've got a couple of different colours we can use and we can alternate between those colours as, as we go along. So the alizarin crimson one, this is obviously quite a watered down version. You can thicken it if you want to as you go along. But you don't want to cover everything up, okay? So just be careful not to kind of completely cover all the details up, otherwise you end up with no, no white space in between. So let's put this a lizard and crimson one. So it's a little bit redder, a bit richer. As you can see coming down here. 
So you can go into the bluer version, for example, which we've got on the brush now, and we can pop this into this area here. Again, just wiping on the side of the mixing palette just, just once or twice before I bring the brush to the painting. That's all I'm doing. Because we've got some darker hairs up here as well, I'll just pop a few in just to show you. Remember to pull away. So you, the tapered end is out and towards the background. Very carefully, just gently touching. That's all we're doing with that. Gently touching it. Hopefully you can still see this on the camera. I think you can. Barely touching. Just a few more. Now we've got to make sure that when we come around this area here, it kind of switches. You can see the way I've got the, the lines underneath. It kind of switches like that. I'm going to put a few more odd ones in just to give me some form of a reference guide. And that's got a bit more red in that one down. So I'm going to get my alizarin crimson again. So the same way we did before, just add a little bit of red into the same darker mix, but a separate little well on your mixing palette. Okay, so it's got a bit of red in there now, a little bit of alizarin crimson, just to warm it up a little bit. So I've done not too much, I want it too red. So these are tiny, tiny marks. Constantly looking at the direction that this goes in. Right, again, looking at the direction, I'm going to change back to the browner, blacker mix again. Right, so I'm going to tinier marks now, smaller marks, little tiny little curls. It's a little bit dark on there, I think, but we'll see how it goes in a minute, once it builds up. Just gradually, working out where things go. It's quite dark around here on the photograph. This is that brownier, blacky colour which we've got. But a little bit of a lizard crimson in there. Just give it a bit of warmth. That's all it is. When you're mixing colours as well, try not to mix more than three colours together if you can help it. Sometimes I'll put four, but normally I try to do about three colours because it can start to get quite muddy uh, with too many colours mixed together. So try not to mix too many colours together. You know, the colour can start to lose its freshness, which you don't want it to do. So again, we're going to put a lot of white highlights around this area as well, with the uh, watercolour white later on. But uh, we need to kind of think about getting the darks underneath first. As I've always said, you need your dark underneath. You can't have light without dark or vice versa, etc, etc. Nag, nag, nag. Um, so yes, you need your darks underneath first to be able to put the light on the top. Which is con con <laughs> completely different to the way that normal watercolours work, obviously. So, <laughs> But then again, I'm, I am different, so that's good. Must be different. <laughs> okay, coming back to this area here. Again, looking at the tiny marks. Just the edge of this nose. This will start to bring this nose together now a little bit more when we get the detail around it because at the moment it looks like it's just floating there, you know. So we need to kind of start to give it some form of grounding, some form of purpose. Nothing to be sniffed at, I know. Oh dear. Couldn't help it. <laughs> okay. And then coming towards the edge, remember to bring the line out over the edge. I was showing you earlier on. I think what I need to do now, I've got a couple of dark lines coming that way. There's one. There's two. And there's further ones further down, but I think that will do initially. I know it's been slightly longer. See the benefit through having a new brush. Okay, we're going to carry on with the bottom of this little nose here. Alright, so you just need to kind of sit and relax and concentrate. And look at all these little tiny marks underneath the nose. 
As I mentioned, I will soften this down that little bit afterwards, just to kind of knock it back, just to bring it all together. It's a bit too much of that brush there. It's okay though, we'll make it work. <laughs> it's quite dark under here anyway. And notice there's a little bit of yellow ochre in this as it comes down here. You see that on the reference photo. As I mentioned, when you, when you zoom into the photograph, you can see the colours a bit more. So that's why it's always wise, as I say, to have a large photo. How many times have I said that today? But it's um, very true, though. very true. So I'm going to bring the brush strokes closer together, the lower down I go, then further apart, the higher up I go. And by doing so, we could create a shape of, of a curve, a feel of a curve there. So yes, it's like um, people do pen and ink drawings, for example, they'll keep the lines closer together or cross hatch sometimes. But in this case, just closer together will make it look darker, obviously. And then bring them further apart, the higher you go. Then you get a nice feel of a roundness going on there. Okay, and then underneath the nose, underneath the noses, and then a bit further, a bit blobby on there, you can touch it with your finger, pull it out, soften it down, all with the tissue, doesn't really matter, unless you want a dirty finger. Uh, and again, I'm going to bring this down, but there's not too much in the way of this colour in here now. It's getting quite light around this area. So I've got to be careful not to overdo it. So that's why, you know, you're forever looking back at your photograph, just to make sure that you haven't put too much on, okay? But you see this starting to come to life now. We're starting to get the detail on there. We've still got some more darks put around here, so we get some darker lines in there. Uh, we've got to soften this back, which we'll do shortly. Um, but it's starting to come together and that's what you've got to work on. You can see the method I'm using. Also, don't forget to click on that subscribe button down below and don't forget that bell icon as well. Just so you'll never miss one of my YouTube videos. And then I'm going to think about underneath the eye. Because down here you've got some very tiny lines. Then these come down this way and then you've got some going across that way then as well. And I think what we need to do now is bring this side down, just a little bit further on. So it's slowly coming together, as I say, it's, it's a slow process of building up the details, but um, it's well worth the effort. Well worth the effort. Just take your time. Keep taking regular breaks, because when you come back, you'll very often you see things that's not quite right, or you you know, you see it from a different point of view, a different perspective, with fresh eyes. So again, bare the touch of the paper, bring in a few lines up here and there, look at the direction they go, remember I've got my reference marks underneath, I can still see some of those kind of little reference marks I've made as we go. Right, let's continue with the head, I'm going to go for a little bit of the more bluey version I think, let's have a quick look what we've got here. Right, so this is the bluey version of that dark colour. All right, so base is going to be lamp black, uh, French ultramarine, and just a little bit of burnt umber as well. So I just want to get a little bit bluer at the top because obviously that's where. So we've got a bit of a blob going on there. Just lift that off. It's that easy. Told you, show you my mistakes as well. That's where the light catches the top of the head because it's wet. Very often a wet area will reflect in a, like a blue sheen. So it's worth. Keeping a reference mark, I'm just making mental note of that. So you think, okay, well, it is wet. It's going to be a little bit bluer. So I'm going to add that slightly bluer colour in. We need to darken this area yet around here yet, don't we? So we'll do that shortly. I'm just going to put a bit of blue in there first. Flicking out like we did before, like we've done down here. So it's a nice tapered line. I'm doing this the wrong way around, I know. I need to do it this way, really. So you can see the difference. This hasn't been washed down. That has. So you can see the difference really in the the layer and the way that the washes work. Just to soften it. And by softening it, as I said, once it's dry, it gives you the ability again to go over the top. In places, not everywhere though. 
with some darker lines or darker details if you want to. And this is for me to be able to kind of get the angle that I need to, to kind of pull off a few little details on the side of the head. So, for example, I can now get the tapered little marks going off the side of the head like this. You can see the benefit through just turning your board around. It makes it a little bit easier, or much easier actually. And vary the direction that these go. Don't have them all the same way. Okay, not completely opposites, but slightly overlapping that we've done with the uh, with the main furs have gone gone along. I'm trying to see on the top of the head here, there are odd ones on the top of the head as well, which kind of pop out here and there. So it's a bit of a bad hair day. I had that problem once. And pull them out as we go along. Just a few odd ones here and there. So that's my brush again and lightly dampen the stem. Remember what I said about just tap your brush onto some kitchen roll first. Just once or twice when you take it out of the water. This is clean water, but just enough just so it just softens everything that you touch. You can see it's softening that down lovely now, which is all I want it to do. And I think I might do the same around here, it's just it's a bit harsh there. And then soften that area, and then the top where we've just been working. And then we'll let that dry. So this is the dark colour we've got, which is the the, bur the burnt umber, lamp black, and alizarin crimson. Okay, that's the normal colour I've been using for all of the otter. But all I want to do, I want to make it a bit darker now. It's going to be a bit of lamp black in there, and add that into that same colour, just to darken it down, thicken it so it's like a single cream. You know, so it's fairly thick on there. It's not too bad. Okay, so that's what you want to look at doing next. We just need it a bit darker now, so we can just get some slightly darker lines in, just so we can sort of just about finish off the top of the head. And so you can see the detail going on there even more so now. So this is another layer. I know, layers galore going on here. But you can see the overall benefit of putting lots of layers on, but gradually building up in colour, and as in depth of tone, as in getting it darker as we go along in places just to add that little bit extra. We need to maintain all these white areas in between, okay? So don't cover everything up as I said earlier on. You start covering up and you start losing that detail. We've spent all this time doing. And then we've got the darker marks underneath here. Just put some reference marks down there again to where this goes and we've got, this is where it's like a bit of a smile going on here, really. So it does look like a smile. Oh, it's got a little grin going on with this cute little face. Okay. Right, so again, size 5 brush. And just dampen it down the areas it's just been working on. Just to soften. Don't rub it in. Don't wash, don't wash it away. Okay. Just to soften them down that little bit. And as you've seen, I've done this with every layer that I put on. And by doing so, it does help create that, that feeling of depth within all, all the layers that we've got on there. And you see that starting to kind of form now, and it's working really working okay. I'm nearly happy with it. <laughs> okay, well, let that dry, and we'll come back to that shortly, and then we'll work on any fine-tuning, and then it's back onto all this area here. And we'll probably do the mouth first, I think, as well. Hi, my name is Paul Hopkinson. So what I do, I show you my technique on how to paint wildlife in watercolour. We go through a variety of subjects from dogs, cats, insects and even botanical subjects as well. And I'll guide you through this right from the beginning all the way through to the end for those final brushstrokes. You'll also find that with most of my videos, you also get the outline drawing and that reference photograph as well. Every month we produce a PDF version, so a typed out version with photographs of that monthly main video. You'll get the PDFs for the months that you are a member. Now this is a very in-depth document with lots and lots of pages of information and instruction, as well as obviously the photographs as well. Now another benefit is that you get access as well to my private Facebook group. Now the good thing about my videos is that they'll be here 24 seven. So you can watch them six months down the line, two years down the line, it doesn't really matter. They'll always be there, you can stop, you can play, you can rewind, you can pause, 
as many times as you want to do so. So that will give us some ideas on what you'll gain from being a member on my Patreon channel. Right, now it's time to work on the mouth. Okay. Now we've already put a bit of a pink hue on there by using that, that pale laser and crimson earlier on, at the very early stage. So looking at the photograph, which I'll try and pop up into the corner up there, look at the photograph and you can see there's a variety of colours on there. When I look at the colour chart, looking at this on my, this is my, obviously my palette's colour chart, um, the colours around here are more this colour, so we've got yellow ochre, and possibly a touch of burnt sienna maybe, so those two colours there. And then finally, to, to get the darker versions of those, we might add a, just a touch of French ultramarine. So we'll mix these, we'll mix these two colours together first, so yellow ochre and burnt sienna. And then once we put the detail on with that, we'll add a little bit of French ultramarine to those two colours. Okay? So let's get on with that now, and get them mixed up. Okay, so, let's get my old mixing brush here. So we've got yellow ochre, and we've got burnt sienna. So I'm going to take some yellow ochre, pop it into the burnt sienna, wash your brush out before you go back into the yellow ochre again. A little bit more yellow ochre into the burnt sienna. Okay. So basically what we're looking at colour-wise on there is something like this. That's quite watery. <laughs> so I'll wet that down a little bit. So that's what we're looking at from underneath the old chin at the moment, okay? Right, so first of all, try and maintain that pink area there just for now. That will need to be darkened as we go along. And we'll start popping in this colour. This is going to be the second layer of paint on this set, on this area, really, isn't it? This little dotty mark I've got down here shows a darker area underneath as it goes underneath the mouth on the jaw. So, again, we'll work on that as we go along. But initially, I just want to get these marks in here. Okay, as we go, there's sound in your paint on my brush there. Just a little bit more. Just to get some detail in there. Just so we can make a start, you know? Just so we can get it going. And I think we're just going to straight into the yellow ochre itself, but a very watery yellow ochre, and we'll pop that in just to the very edge. Bear in mind it's going to get blended down as we go along. Now then, alizarin crimson and a little bit of burnt umber. So we're on the palette again, we've got alizarin crimson here and further around my palette there we've got burnt umber. So what I want to do really is get a little bit of burnt umber and pop it in to the alizarin crimson. Okay, so with that one, what we're going to get is, let's go back to my bit of test paper there, is something like that. And that's what we're going to use for inside the mouth, but not too much of it. Okay, so we're going to, we're going to drill in this down, but we need some detail in there. So when you look at what we can pop into here, it's just going to be a little bit, just so we can show, show some marks, some shapes. If it's too red, we can add a bit more burnt umber into that. If it's too red, I'm just going to do that now. It's a little bit too red there. So again, test it if you want to before you go into your painting. And then bring this one in. This is where that little tiny pink hue, <laughs> cute little part of the, of the otter, this one, where you've got that little pinky area just underneath its, uh, on its bottom jaw there, just on its mouth. And you think, oh. So cute, so cute. Beautiful little gritter, it really is. And I think what we're going to do with that, we're going to add a little bit of French ultramarine into that same colour now. And what that's going to do, that's going to dullen it, like that. It's the same colour, but with a little bit of French ultramarine in there. That's all I've done. And we can use this as a darker colour just to go over the top of this area, just, in a, just to begin with. And you know, we, we need to soften this down as per usual anyway, in a minute. I think the benefit for doing this as well is that because we've got this colour on here, we're going to put a bit in there by the way, aren't we? Just in this section here. This adds that little bit more kind of colour to the to the otter itself, which is great, it's what we want, because otherwise it's just very samey. So what I want to do with that now, just kind of dampen that down. I'm going to go back to my size 5 brush, you know what I do here. Let's get rid of that now. 
and we're going to just lightly dampen that down just to soften it back. Then once this is dry, we can go over the top again with another layer of detail. So basically the same way we did the head. Just put layer on layer on layer to get that feeling of depth all the way through. That's the way to kind of achieve that is by just working on layers each time. And the good thing is when you just lightly dampen the stone, you're not soaking it through, it will soon dry. So within five minutes or so, you should be able to paint back over the top. So this is, as I say, a little bit of blue which tends to dull in colours. It's quite handy actually if you want to make a just if you want to take off the brightness of a colour, add a little bit of blue. Because blue being a cold colour as well, just kind of set it back a little bit as well. There you go. So that's looking a bit better. So it needs to go darker yet. <laughs> so I think I will add a little bit over the top of here now. Just to knock that back a little bit. It's a bit too bright. This time I'm going to add a little bit of dark colour of the head, which is this one here. Add that into that mix, okay? What I'm after really is just a dark colour. So I'm going to add a bit, this, this is all that same colour, so I'm just going to add a bit more into the top of the mouth now, just there. This one needs to be darkened around that area, and we'll use the, the head colour for that. So that's quite a nice colour to use. Again, just darken this area around here, pulling a few little lines out here and there. As we go. Okay. And the same there. And I think because it, this is quite um, a dull colour, I think what I'll do, I'll add this into this area here as well. Because we're putting white over this, don't forget, as we go along. And all we're doing is looking directly at the, the direction of every single kind of section if you know what I mean. So keep looking at the direction, just so you've got it in your head. Keep looking backward and forward as you go along. Bit of crisscrossing, don't forget to do that. Keep crossing it over. And the good thing about doing it this way as well, because you're starting light, and I'm going to the dark area, is that you can go back into your dark colour and start bringing some over the top. So you can blend them both together gradually by adding detail. So for example, if I go into the dark colour now, can add a bit of dark in here, just barely touching the paper again. I've said my favourite words. And that kind of brings both sections together just by adding a little bit of dark in there. See what I mean? So that's starting to bring it together. We can do the same with the section here. Just a little bit of dark in places, not too much, just a little bit. And that's brought that section together again. Obviously it needs wetting down a little bit. Remember, every layer that you apply, the darker the colour will go. Because you're painting on the same top of the same colour every time, it will get darker and darker and darker. I'm going to go into my kind of head colour again. I'm not washing the brush out, I should do, but I'm not going to in this case, because I'm going into a very dark colour. And I want to add in this little smile line. That's what I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it a smile line. <laughs> Um, within there and further down and I'm going to put a few of this same colour underneath the chill. I need this to be fairly dark under here. I don't want it to be black, but I want it to be dark. You see that on the photograph, it's not black. It's like a very dark kind of browny, um, grey colour underneath there. So you can see this is starting to come together around the mouth now. It's just a matter of working it slowly, taking your time, there's no rush. you know. So again, this is that dark colour again, but the watered down version, remember we watered one down, kind of slowly building this up as we go along, bit by bit. Right, so now for the browny blue colour, and as I say, the brown and blue, so it's um, Burnt Umber and French Ultramarine. So uh, more brown than blue, if you know what I mean. So work on that assumption. And we're going to start Getting some details now onto the face. We need to start getting some shape going now because now we've got all this working quite well. We need to look at doing the rest of this now and starting to bring this face together. Okay. So there's going to be small little marks, little lines. Using our little crushed brush. Not too much paint on your brush if you can help it because it can get quite blobby with this using this method. Just remember to take a lot of the water off the brush first, you end up with the spikes. 
if they're all clogged up it's going to come off in a big blob and then you'll be thinking oops <laughs> you can see with the effect of this it's quite uniform so you do need to kind of keep crisscrossing as you go along that's the only thing with as I say rake brushes that kind of thing is that they can the, the lines are, are too much in line so again all I'm doing is looking at the direction that all this goes I'm using the same colour all the time this kind of uh, browny blue colour that's all I'm doing just for this first layer of detail using our specially constructed brush I'm going to dampen this area down so again the size 5 brush or whatever size you've got at hand as long as it's a reasonable size and just lightly soften all this area down we have to bring some darker lines into this yet anyway because obviously the next layer that we put on this will be using the double zero brush and we'll have a bit more control of where all the bristles and the marks go as we go along I'm going to work our way down now looking at the, where the details go but I notice that these tend to curl around, I'm going to over exaggerate, so curl around like that so around this area, remember this is still the first layer of detail really apart from the lovely yellow ochre wash we put on before but this kind of comes up and around kind of a bit of a curl the way it is here so I'm going to kind of over exaggerate that curl a little bit so you can see what I'm doing Notice how this kind of goes that way and then gradually fans out to that direction as it goes around as well. So again these are the little pointers that I'm looking for whilst I'm doing this using my my very expensive brush as you can see. <laughs> right, working my way down. Working my way down to you babe. There you go. So I'm going to look at the direction that these are going on here. Again, keep looking at the photo. Nearly done this section now for this one layer. And I notice there's also a bit of a line going down here. I'm going to start bringing these hairs, this fur, hairs, whatever. <laughs> in this direction now as well. Because that's where it goes and it starts getting straighter and straighter, then goes that way. So I'm going to wet this down now with a size 5 brush. As you can see we'll wet this down, just want to smudge it in a little bit more. Not too much though, I don't want the, the detail disappearing on me. So just a little bit more. We'll darken this down with the, with the, um, with the detailing on the top. Now join me in part 4 where we'll start finishing those sections of the otter by adding the darker and lighter fur layers. I'll see you there.